So I put this PowerPoint, it, it was already in your Google Classroom, but I put it in as an assignment today, not that it's an assignment, but I had a couple slides that were like practice slides and it says practice this. And like in class, we would draw it out together. Um, but because you're, I mean, I thought you might want a permanent copy of that. And so um, I made an editable version that you could write your answers on. I don't know, maybe you want it, maybe you don't. So um, I'm gonna jump to today. And the first thing I have is a, is a poll. So if you um, open this up um, and if you push play, then you'll have, do you guys know how to sp split your screens? Or do you not care? Um, anyways, you can vote. The question is, would you like me to provide you um, with like guided notes, you know, in school, we would fill out those skeletons. Um, and I don't know if you thought that was helpful, um, because you don't have one of those to fill out. My freshmen are going to do that today or tomorrow when I have them, they're going to fill out a skeleton. And that's when I was thinking, I wonder if you guys want one of these. Um, so just vote yes or no, and I'll use that to drive the future. Um, I can put them up if you guys want. So while you're doing that, just a plug for um, the faces. It's really hard to get to know you guys um, if you're not giving me a face. And I cut you out of videos, like I'll blur it or I'll just cut it so you don't have to worry about others. Today I got a lot of faces and, and maybe I normally do have a lot of faces. So this is a blanket statement for all my classes because like the first day I had almost all faces and then last week, by the end of the week, it's like I had three faces. And you can imagine talking to a blank screen. Um, one, I, I don't feel connected to you guys when I'm looking at a blank screen. Um, you could, if you like really have to have a blank screen, um, and I know like there's situations why you wouldn't want, like maybe you don't want people to see where you live and I get it. Um, but whatever the case, you could at least put a profile picture up so that I start learning your, your face with your name um, and that would be helpful. But this is what I was looking up, like since we can't shake hands, hug or sit, blah, 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 um, we can at least see each other and and you can kind of read people that way, but you have more of your senses are involved in that engagement. So you feel more connected, I think. And so I appreciate that. Um, yes, Sophia. Splitting screens is um, different depending on if you have um, a laptop or you have a Chromebook. I have a, a picture um, that I can send I can put it in the Google um, that shows you how to do it on a Chromebook. I don't have a Chromebook, um, but there's a few buttons to push. But for me, like I can just grab one of these screens and I can pull it down and off to the side. And so now I can have like my agenda open and my fats open. Um, but like when I'm doing the Zoom, I don't know, can I put that back in? Do you guys see the fats now or did my screen share stick with the first screen. Yes, you can see my fats or no, you can't see my fats. Okay, that's what I thought. So it only looks at one particular screen. Um, but like I have my Zoom open on the right, so I see all of you guys. And then I've just kind of minimized my screen here and I can shrink it to fit whatever I need to do. Um, so I have my screen open over here with my lecture, but I don't have a full screen. And then I have my Zoom still open and it's not a full screen. So I just minimized them both. And that way I can see you guys and my lecture at the same time. So I like that. Um, it's, you know, all preferences. Today we're gonna to talk about lipids, which is section 3.3. And remember you're reading the books and you're doing the worksheets at home, the workbook. Um, I had told you last week to do 
3.1 through 3.3. So you may have already done this one. Um, so you would feel really on top of things. Before I get into that, I thought I would back up. This was one of the, so I just went back one slide. This was one of the slides that I threw in as a practice and I had put it in your Google Classroom. What I would like is a doodle pad. I'm gonna like go out and get a new machine that I can actually write on. Um, but this being in PowerPoint, I thought if you wanted to like insert numbers, you would be able to do that. But just remember, um, we're, we're gonna start card counting at the carbonyl. So here's our oxygen. So I would count one, two, three, four, five is how I would number this one. And deoxyribose and ribose are gonna be numbered the same because they're both pentose um, molecules. The only difference here, lost in oxygen, deoxy, see? And on this one, all you had to do was label the third and fifth carbon. So again, if this is deoxyribose and you counted one, two, three, all of these are the third primes. So the one in the downward position is your third prime carbon. The fifth prime carbon is sticking off. So remember one, two, three, four, five up here. So this is my fifth prime carbon here, here, and here. And that gets important when we talk about um, nucleic acids. So that was one of the practices that I had put in the Google and just threw it out there. Um, and then I put it on the slide. This was one I just found. So like, um, if you wanted to try this one, you could. I gave you that organic molecules, identifying organic molecules worksheet, and mostly all it was was identifying the functional groups. Um, so I put this worksheet in because I just found it this morning, um, and you could give that a try. I can tell from this ring structure that that's a carbohydrate. I can tell there's no oxygens here. That's a lipid. I can tell from the phosphate, that's a nucleic acid. Um, that's a nucleic acid because we just looked at that exact same picture. This is a disaccharide. Now me, I just recognize the rings. You might count up your hydrogens and your oxygens and you would find they have two to one ratio. Like this is going to have um, 12 hydrogens and six oxygens and this is going to have 10 and five. This one, a whole bunch of hydrogen, mostly car hydrocarbon chains. So this is going to be a lipid. Um, this one has an amine group right here and a carboxyl group. So I know that's an amino acid. Um, this looks like I would probably count up a two to one ratio. Um, and then this one has nitrogen. It's lost. This one really we would like to see. Oops, we'd like to see that bigger. Um, but it's lost the hydrogens in bonding. And so that this one is tricky, but that's a, a polypeptide chain. Anyways, that's a couple that I put in for practice, if you wanted. Um, so we'll get going on the lipids. They're pretty easy. Proteins take a lot more time and a lot more emphasis is on proteins in the AP curriculum. So I don't have you doing any more practice with the lipids tonight. The protein pogle is kind of long. So I'm gonna let you do that um, in your hour and a half today, as well as working on that after our quiz on Wednesday. So then I'll look for the protein pogle Thursday. So you'll have a little bit longer for that one because it's kind of long. Um, proteins, we're really looking at the structure. Be very familiar with what causes the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures. Wednesday, we said we're going to have the functional group quiz. Well, I said that maybe I would do it Monday, but then I didn't really post anything for it. So I wanted you to have a for sure heads up. So we're going to do that Wednesday. We'll meet in the Zoom. It'll only take about 15 minutes and then you're out of there. So then you can go and do um, whatever you need to do to get caught up. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started on the... Um, lipids, which I'm going to open this way so that it's on my screen. So I said lipids have a bad rap. Like we are all don't want to eat our lipids because we don't want to get fat. But um, really, they're quite essential in our lives. They play very important roles. Um, so I like to say you need a little bit of it. And it's loading. 
do do. So we're probably most familiar with fats and oils. In, in uh, ninth grade, when we did macromolecules, we just talked about the fats and oils. Um, this year, we're going to add um, steroids and cholesterol and um, uh, different sterols. Okay. So here, oops, please don't open. I don't want you to open. Okay. So um, you should be able to compare saturated and unsaturated fats. Hopefully you remember a little bit about that from ninth grade. Um, you should also be able to recognize a sterol or a steroid um, and phospholipids. Explain why the phospholipids form bilayers. So remember, it's all about structure meeting function. So characteristics of lipids is that they're nonpolar, and that's because of the fact that they are all hydrocarbon chains. And remember from your functional groups, all your functional groups, except for methyl, were polar. So um, this one is nonpolar, which makes it hydrophobic. Remember, that means water fearing. That's why um, lipids, oils, and water don't mix, right? They create a layer. So they're insoluble. Um, all hydrophobic things are going to be insoluble because they're repelled by the polar water. They serve long-term storage more than twice as much as a carbohydrate or a protein. So carbohydrates release about four calories per gram in general, um, depending on the carb, whereas fats hold nine calories per gram. So a lot more energy in those carbon-carbon bonds. Um, they serve to cushion our organs, they hold our organs in place, and as the polar fox would know, they insulate the body. So um, organisms that live in, darn, um, in cold environments would have a greater lipid layer, greater fat layer. Um, so they're long hydrocarbon chains. That's what you see here, just a whole bunch of carbon and hydrogen. Now we're talking about fatty acids here, and this is a glycerol. So this would be a triglyceride. So we have triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroids that we talk about. So triglycerides get their name by glycerol and three triglycerides. So we want to see what makes it um, a mono, I'm sorry, a saturated or an unsaturated fat. Fats are used for insulation and long-term storage for animals Plants would use the oils instead. Um, phospholipids, we know are components of the phospholipid bilayer, AKA the cell membrane. Um, and steroids are used for communication. Um, they're also a component of the cell membrane. If you remember, the steroids are in between the phospholipids and it keeps them from sticking together. Waxes are another example of lipids. They serve as protection. Um, so like you might think of some of the plants that have that hard outer layer, the waxy outer layer, um, and that's protecting them. Always remember the synthesis and hydrolysis reactions, right? We are going to build up with dehydration synthesis, so we need to lose a water molecule in order to form a bond. Hydrolysis is the exact opposite, hydrolysis breaking with water. Um, so we're gonna break the water molecule apart and put it back in the original molecule. So with each of these macromolecules we talk about, we, we go through this process. Remember the last uh, unit we did macro, I'm um, sorry, we did carbohydrates and we made glycosidic linkages. This time we're making diest, we're making ester bonds, sorry. So this is just a review of enzymes needed for each of those reactions. Enzymes fit specific molecules. So you can see where the substrate um, fits an active site here and the hydroxyl and the hydrogen of the other um, are going to fit together. So looking a little bit more at our triglycerides, we can see the three attached to the glycerol. If they have as much hydrogen as possible, they're saturated. Saturated fats, like dietary-wise, not so good because they clog your arteries. They create um, atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, all that sort of thing. Um, more of your oils are unsaturated. 
they're liquid at room temperature and that's a good thing. So they serve more in the lubricating components like synovial fluid in your joints. They have that carboxyl functionality. So remember the carboxyl acts like an acid, carboxylic acid. Um, and then the ester linkage is between the hydroxyl of the glycerol and the carboxyl of the fatty acid. Okay, so saturated fats, some characteristics, they are um, long straight chains. So you see these straight chains, it makes them easy to pack together. Kind of like when we were talking about um, the cellulose and the chitin, how they pack together. So that's why these are solid at room temperature. Mostly they're animal fats and I already said that they're not so good. They have no double bonds. So what are they sat saturated means you, you're containing as much as you can possibly, like you hold as much as you can. So what they're holding is hydrogen. So every carbon has hydrogen attached to it. So the yellows or the blues are the, um, carb the hydrogen, so sorry. If we took some of those hydrogens out, we would create a double bond between carbon this is where normally I draw all over my board. Um, so the double bond makes it unsaturated. It doesn't hold as much hydrogen as possible. This bended, it creates a kink in the, in the structural formula and the kink allows it to have a lower melting point. They don't stack together. That's why they're liquids. So their lower melting point allows them to be a liquid at room temperature. And the more double bonds there are, the more bendy, kinky they refer to, um, the more kinky it is. And then um, that would decrease the melting point as well as um, make it better dietary wise. So those are good. Polyunsaturated fats are the best. Okay, so this is where um, we're talking about the energy. So the carbon-carbon bond has way more energy than the carbon-hydroxyl bond. And the carbon carbohydrate over here, you had you have carb. Every carbon has a hydroxyl and a hydrogen, right? So that contains less energy than all of these carbons. So it's replacing um, a hydroxyl with a carbon, and so the carbon-carbon bond is a lot more energy. And that's why it's used for long-term storage. Okay, if we replace one of our three fatty acids from the triglyceride, we have a phospholipid. So that's the one you're most familiar with. You see it in the cell membrane. We refer to these as amphipathic. That might be a new word for you. Amphi is partial. Think of like amphibians, right? They're, they live part of their life in water and part of their life on land. So um, amphi is partial or double, double life. Um, so amphipathic means it has both a polar here in the phosphate group and a nonpolar, the fatty acids. So it's, it has both functionalities of being hydrophobic and hydrophilic. So remember, hydrophobic are your nonpolar, hydrophilic are your polar. They like water, they don't like water. And that's really important when you talk about the structure um, of the cell membrane. This part is going to orientate itself away from the fluids, both inside and outside the cell, whereas the phosphate will orientate itself outwards. That's why it's associated with um, the extracellular and intracellular fluids. So that's what I was just talking about here. Um, that phosphate head is what creates the hydrophilic component. The fatty acid tails is what's hydrophobic. So this kind of plays a role in maybe how cells came to be in the first place. So here we have a membrane and in, we don't have a membrane, we have a phospholipid chain, which in solution, because it is trying to orientate away from the water, right, all these hydrophobic fatty acids are trying to orientate away from the water, which causes them to actually fold back upon themselves and create bubbles called myceles. So this mycel is likely how the first cells came to be. So phospholipids in that primordial soup, 
that we refer to, the original earth was all covered in water. Um, so this would have created bubbles and then trapped macromolecules on the inside of them, putting them close together, which allowed them to react and create larger molecules. So perhaps that has to do with the evolution um, of the cell. So then over time, a, two layers come together. Um, and again, those orientate themselves away from water. And so we've gone from the mycel to the bilayer. So far, so good? Okay, glycolipid. So glyco, when you see that, you're referring to sugars. So here's a sugar molecule, lipid, um, referring to that carbon, that hydrocarbon chain there. So um, glycolipids are similar to phospholipids. However, they have um, sugar molecules instead of phosphates. And we did talk about these. Um, we referred to the oligosaccharides last lecture. Um, so this is the one that is in the cell membrane and works for cell to cell communication. So it helps your cells recognize what uh, cell they are. So remember, we looked at these antenna looking pieces. So that's um, a phospho, it's a glycolipid if it's attached to these lipids. It's a glycoprotein if it's attached to the protein. Okay, steroids, notice they all have this four ring structure. So you should be able to recognize them just off the bat when you look at them. Um, so they all start with this four ring structure and the only thing that changes is its functional group. So that's where structure meets function. So depending on um, what type of functional group they have, they have different functionalities. So they all have the four fused groups with different um, ones. <clears throat> so here's some examples of steroids. Cholesterol hormones um, like aldosterone, bile acid, and vitamin D are all examples of um, steroids. Interestingly, we talk about how we have to be in the sun for 20 minutes every day so our body can make vitamin D. How it's doing it is it's converting cholesterol into vitamin D. And knowing that they have that same backbone helps you understand how that is possible. So cholesterol, um, we talked about this with the cell membranes. So it keeps the lipids from packing together and it's also the precursor, mean it's the, like it came before, to all of our steroids, including our sex hormones. Um, the negative is it does clog our arteries and can um, cause problems there. So here it is um, in between the phospholipids. I talked about it already. Um, keeping those from packing together, which allows your membrane to stay flexible. This is showing you some similarities. This is uh, the male hormone testosterone, and this is the female hormone estrogen. So notice the only difference between this is you've lost a hydrogen atom, a, carbox, a carbonyl versus a hydroxyl. So that's super interesting that our steroids are so very similar and just adding a functional group or taking away a functional group makes all the difference between a male and a female. Um, and you can see this here too. Um, cortisol, which is a stress hormone versus aldosterone, which has to do with your um, water levels, basically. So they're very similar, just a few differences and that gives it a different functionality. So the wax is um, even like your earwax, right? <laughs> Long chains um, bonded with an alcohol. I should have a picture. So we know that they're solid at room temperature. You're probably most familiar with those waxes that are on some of those crispier leaves, I guess. You can feel the wax right on it. Hydrophobic because it's just a carbohydrate chain. Um, hydrocarbon chain, so you can see the water is being repelled by the wax, which protects those leaves. Also, um, in beeswax, makes up the honeycomb. So again, it just is a protective component. Here, they're using it for storage. Here, it's using it to help um, from losing water. 
Okay, so I think that's it on that. So um, any questions on the phospholipids or triglycerides? I would go through and make a concept map if that's helpful. Um, you want to recognize the structure and the function. Um, the functionality of lipids, just the big thing being that hydrocarbon chain makes them nonpolar, I'm sorry, yes, nonpolar and therefore hydro phobic. Um, and then by adding functional groups like phosphates or adding cholesterol or, I'm sorry, carbohydrates, we change their um, abilities, their role in our bodies. So we're going to real quick do our breakout with uh, topic three questions. So if you click this link, um, either in your Google Classroom or here, you can open it up. We're just going to do those questions and then we'll We'll have conversations and we can leave and do our protein poll.